Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. Hi. And this is our recap of the 2020 Canadian Tire Figure Skating Championships. <laughs> or as Rod Black would say, Canadian Tire Figure Skating Championships from, I actually don't remember what city. No, but he would include, he'd be like, Canadian Championships where Deanna's old, 2020. <laughs> That's what he would say. Because Deanna that Salato, was... 36. The oldest person in the world. <laughs> I'm only a couple really years older than she is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think Tracy was getting confused, or maybe she didn't pay attention to uh, Deanna at yes, Nationals. Some of their facts were a little bit confused. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Also, so it was, we confirmed it was a torn quad muscle that she has had. So, could you imagine? I mean, <laughs> yikes. So, they only were doing throws and jumps. Uh, like basically the week before nationals. So that's, and I think you could kind of look, <laughs> well, we'll get to that, but they looked like they were jumping at different continents at different times, but. Exactly. Anyway, Jonathan, how was your week? Hi, hi. This oh, is delayed because Thank of me. Thank you so, so much for asking. I have to say um, Canadian championships were spaced out nicely. I appreciated that um, YouTube had a lot of great um, clips available for me right away. Yeah. This was lovely. This was a lovely week to watch skating. It was and a pleasant I have time. To tell you, three out of the four disciplines. I was like pleasantly surprised at the depth and involvement there. Yeah. I was, it's always pleasant. You know, mm -hmm. what I really like, we'll start with positives. Rod and Tracy, a lot of energy. Yes. And Tracy's, I, what I appreciate about Tracy is she is doing that kind, positive spin for sure. Um, sometimes in comic ways, because you see her dancing around some subject matter. But she's also um, giving some real, I thought, commentary there. She was giving yeah. a surprising amount of technical insight on the jumps. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that, yeah, she just did a really nice job. Compared to Rob Black, I was talking to some Canadian friends of mine who know him from commentating in several other sports. And they're like, his reception is the same in many of the sports in which he commentates, is how I'll word that. I mean, he is right out of an SNL clip, if we were going to talk right. about Canadians, and I kind of love it. The, the dog show. Um, yes. Best in show. He's, he's that But character. you gotta love it, kind of. Yeah. yeah. And we, listen, we listen to him like once a year, and I get excited every year, Jonathan Byer, because did you notice when Ted was doing the junior ladies, his anxiety of trying to say, skating to Harry Potter and the sister so. Kaya Ruder, 13 years old. His that was exactly the exact, it was the Harry Potter announcement in particular that I know. <laughs> it's always anxious and da-da-da. Because like, he's trying, I feel like he's trying to get it in before they start because he really wants to not be on their program. But the emphasis on the syllables is da-da-da. It's yeah. very intense <laughs> and off kilter. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Tracy, the physicality of his narrative is... <laughs> I, Tracy clearly learned commentary from the CBS and... NBC school and she mm -hmm. does some of that because she knows how to do her Scott Hamilton triple axle and it comes yeah. out sometime that old yeah. school CBS riders lady <laughs> ladies cup yeah. <laughs> she knows how to set it like Vern right she knows how to do her inner thing and then be like Yukasato triple loop yes <laughs> out of nowhere so yeah mm -hmm. I did notice you know what? Let's say this now in general so it doesn't seem like we're picking on anyone. Canadians are a sensitive breed. So let's be calm. I, feel, I always feel like we're kind of like kicking a puppy or something when we talk about Canada. Oh, but well, they kick back. That's the thing. That <laughs> sometimes. But Tracy, if the skater is not so good, she keeps talking more and oh, saying more and more sure. positive things. Okay. Okay. There were a you, couple you girls. like ambitious program. That was that was a common um, sort of thing, or that's when she would go to the fluff narrative, and we'll talk about it when we get to those disciplines. But when certain things were being mentioned that she may not be on board with, she just stays quiet and diverts the conversation. We heard nothing about pneumonia the entire week. It Basically, like you... that was the most obvious example. Is when that was brought up, she let it just fall down on the floor, and then would continue with something else. No one so. in Canada seemed to believe or entertain that. We were hearing it from other right. coaches before the event, and people right. were just moving right along. And yeah, but she had a very positive spin for Gabby. I thought it was okay, um, but I uh, just. Tracy, when some of the girls, there were some 
senior lady skaters who maybe if you saw them at a U.S. Nationals, they'd be in maybe the first group or the second group and you wouldn't really remember. Coyote they're not, they're not really ready for prime time yet. Right. She would talk a lot and she would just give a lot of positives. And I mean, there were some girls who didn't know that you have to put your bunga pads under the tights or tuck them into your like. So I wear bunga pads so I can. But if you the thing is, is that when you wear bunga pads and they can be seen, it looks really unprofessional. It kind of like cuts off that clean line. It's kind of one when, of the reasons we hate a day. You don't want anything to distract yeah. from your beautiful long lines, Jonathan. Well, and in some of them, there was a juniorish quality, yes, perhaps to the skating. But I wondered if in some instances they were trying to play up age mm. in, in some certain ways, like trying to not prevent them from looking green because they almost wanted it to seem like it was their first year out there for like sympathy. A lot of first year out there for the senior yeah. ladies, but yeah. it was okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It all worked out. I felt, I felt, I felt like we were watching puppies in, you know, that commercial with Sarah McLaughlin. Like I had the same. Uh, oh, I'm like the puppy bowl on. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know that commercial. I do know. Come on during in the, the eyes of an Yeah. That's how I felt watching a lot of the senior ladies. They all were, you know, they all really love to skate, Jonathan. Beautiful. What a beautiful sentiment, Dave. <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so let's, let's dive in to, the, I think, the deepest event was the men here. And the men kind of reminded me of that Canada has a whole country full of people that belong with Camden Polganin and Andrew Torgashev. And- yes, it, it's completely middling right there. All these like very talented people yeah. right on the cusp, knocking on the door, but not really opening it. Yeah. And then the ones that are above are maybe the ones with less talent, but who are caught. It was, it's fascinating because there are so many uh, male skaters who seem like are on the cusp, could break through. Maybe they've had injuries, but they all are kind of in that clump uh together but and a lot of them each individual they were all individuals too like i felt like each of these male skaters especially you know top six or so they really had distinctive skating styles i i, I was very impressed with the depth i enjoyed watching the men's competition here very much it was yeah. fun and because we haven't been subject to them in the united states since they were novice or intermediate they didn't frustrate me as much so right. i was just really able to enjoy it um, right who was your favorite? Oh, well, you know, Roman Sadowski has always been like um, one of my favorites. I think his arms are so elegant. And you know what? Let's talk about Rod and Tracy. Tall shaming. They were tall shaming this entire men's event. Nick Nadeau, they were doing it. Tall. Orisel, they were doing it. He's I mean, too tall. even Roman. But Roman is quite tall as well, but the, it was a real thing for them. Conrad because... hasn't grown into his height yet. Nick has. Nick, Nick is very, my friend. <laughs> My friend was like, he could try modeling, like he could try the pairs, yeah. whatever. And even with that coach, they could model together. <laughs> He's so attractive, saying. Jonathan. Is he yeah. 18 or is this like a typical skating thing? Can we call uh, yeah, him attractive? Is he 18 yet? Let's. Oh, no, he's 22. Or oh, like. good. He's really freaking hot. Yeah, because he's got like a man's build. He's, got um, a, he's a man now. Um, right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so. An OnlyFans skating page. <laughs> okay. Um, there are some of those, actually. Anyway. Turns uh, out. Turns yeah. Out. But I think that um, Roman, you know, started rough at Skate Canada. It was such a thrilling moment at NHK. And for this to really solidify his kind of place here. You know, we knew him as that quirky guy with the YouTube channel or the podcast or whatever he that thing YouTube is. Channel. Listen, you know what I respect about him? He goes for the views. You know, yeah. people shame you for it. And I, you know, they like clickbait or whatever. Did he not have a video of what Han Yu, what was it? There was some, he made a video about, wait, I got to look this up. Because well, and there was something about like Han Yu hugging someone on the podium. Or what something. it is feels what like, like what a Han yeah. Yu hug feels like. He is going for it. You know what? People will shame you, but those views live forever. Skating is expensive. You make that money, Roman. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. More power to you. Although here what he needed he no say? extra help because the program was just stunning. His arms. Wait, 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 wait. What did Yuzu's waist feel like? Nationals 2019 Q&A. In Incredible, Romsky. You went for those views. I respect him. And he got him, I'm sure. Yeah. 46,000. Respectable for his channel. Definitely the best. Yeah. 
So if he said anything, um, anything bad, they'd be like, he's using Yuzu for views. Listen, he's going for yeah. it. Okay, that is marketing. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Bravo. At that point in time, Roman Sadovsky may not have been worth 46,000 views, but he has made himself relevant of them now. He probably will get yeah. more. Okay, my question to you, Jonathan. I'd love to put you on the spot. Tell me, yeah. Why is the combination of Schindler's List and Bells of Moscow now a thing? Obviously, different composers. Satoko and Roman Sadovsky both did it this year, which makes me think that some composer put this together. And this Yeah, because it's, it's been a while since I've seen Schindler's List. And now, maybe they use the Bells of Moscow in the soundtrack, but I don't recall it. But it's certainly a possibility because most of it's all that John Williams music. Yeah, and... Bells of Moscow um, is Rachmaninoff, so... Yeah, totally, and it was originally orchestral, or, I mean, piano, and then they turned it into an orchestral piece, but... Um, well, I am looking at yeah, it now. Yeah, but it, it has, we have seen it twice, which makes it seem like maybe it was used as incidental music in the film or something, it's just not the original theme we okay, think okay, of. Okay, let's go through. This is the, the official soundtrack from Schindler's List. We have theme from Schindler's List... Jewish town, Krakow ghetto, sounds sounds uplifting. Um, yeah, uh, it's immolation a with our lives we give life. That sounds very Jewish. Uh, remembrances, yeah. Schindler's workforce, Ofen Pipestock. I could have done more. Um, Auschwitz Birkenau, stolen memories, making a list. Give me your names. Um, Jerusalem, Shel Zahov, Jerusalem of God. Uh, remembrances, themes from Schindler's List. Okay, these are the songs that are not. And the soundtrack, but our feature in the movie. Um, Pipestock, um, Port Una Cabeza, the, when they, they, in the nightclub scene. Right. Jealousy, Die Horakutsum, Mi Water und Wandersmann, uh, the German marching song, um, I See No. Yeah, because you would absolutely include the Bells of Moscow. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. It's one of the Mutter. No, I don't see any. I have no idea. So I wonder if this was performed together uh, somewhere because it would be highly unusual that. Yeah, because I, I don't understand the the reason to put it together historically or something. But it works, like, even though. It's, yeah, completely, completely. It's not like when Satoko put planets with Star Wars. That's <laughs> like, a I don't Tom think Dixon they're thinking thing. two topical things. Like I think they just work well together. Like there are some things that only really work in Tom Dixon's mind, but I, I think that this worked very well together. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, it's it's very seamless, and but again, there's um, the heart on his sleeve, and I think his height um, is definitely an asset, especially in those step sequences, because there's so much arm, mm. which every time like a tall person like myself gestures, so it can be so awkward because it is so noticed, but he really uses it to his advantage. And I think it's so beautiful. And when he's in that camel position in the short program and then turns up for that feature, it's just, I don't know. It was really nice to see him do this, even though it wasn't even as great as it was at NHK, I thought. But Well, I have a funny anecdote from that I'm reading on Wikipedia right now. Okay. It's a theme from Schindler's List is one of the most recognized contemporary film scores, particularly the violin solo. Many high-level figure skaters have used this in their programs, including Katarina Witt, Irina Slutskaya, Johnny Weir, and Julia Nitskaya. And that's the third. It's right under the Academy Award. It's the fact that figure skaters freaking love this music. I would like someone to please go in there that has a lot of time and link all of the skaters that have used it. Please just, like, just all of them. Just hundreds of people. Yeah, exactly. And then <laughs> some of... Some of um, um, our Jewish friends who are um, find it more controversial, you can please like link your references, the salon think pieces from kind of like the Bernie and um, Liz Warren yeah. types. You can have all of the feelings in there about this. And I think we should really blow it thorough. out. Let's make yeah. skating happen on the Schindler's List Wikipedia page. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It was a quick Google. So okay. <laughs> well, I have to say my... So have, they, have they named the team yet? For worlds, I know the three medalists were assigned to no. four continents because this is interesting. Now, if you are Canada, are you going to send all three and let them duke it out at four continents or are you just going to send Roman? No, no, no. So here's the deal Canada only has one man, they oh. have two ladies, they have two pairs, and they have three dance teams. 
they are planning on letting them duke it out of four continents, which is kind of very what Russia often does at the Europeans. And what we've talked about that we wished uh, the USFS would have done in certain years. And I think in this case, in every discipline, it makes sense to me that they would do this. Yeah. Well, the women have to to try to get their world minimums. Or so, whatever, yes, but... that's very real. Um, Although they he... did say that um, the winner had a very successful fall season. And I thought, really? She didn't get the minimum technical score. But I digress. Anyway. But remember, yet she still had the highest score, the, uh, the highest free skating score of any of the other ladies. So when she might be start... the closest to getting it. Jonathan, when you start, you know, dividing highest free skate score, you are really parsing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, but how else are they going to choose? I know, I know. I'm just saying I that know, they were parsing a, here. Because yeah. <laughs> you know if she had the highest free skate score, that means she had a rough short program at that event. So right, yeah, all exactly. eyes on her short at Four Continents, not to give her like a Vanessa Atler and even bar complex. But uh, let's, okay. <laughs> that's kind of what my eye is on. But uh, yeah, we could just talk about it. And then before we go into all, skater by skater, but I would have to say for the men, they have one spot. I definitely think that they should duke it out at four continents because there's been different glimmers of hope i have more faith i have faith that keegan messing i do could deliver um yeah. but roman is developing more consistency and becoming a very all and the judges like to reward it when they yeah, can yeah and he's if, a he, if he allows it they like to give him those scores but he has he's still um rough around the edges technically you know it's there but I, it's not as surely there maybe as a Keegan. I'm not really, m me personally, I'm not really considering Nam for that spot. I'm not, I'm not either, unfortunately. I don't see it. The jumps in that free, I mean, if he had really delivered a strong free, he would have made it more difficult to, to not have him be the choice. But when it's kind of what you've got going for you and you didn't do it, I think it's it's easy to pass that up. To me, this is between Roman and Keegan for the sake of the two spots next year. So I don't, I don't, yeah. With Nam, I don't see the growth potential. I see that he's improved, but I don't see the opportunity to, like the realistic improvement beyond right. what he's doing. It's just some of the problems. Are, what would they need in order to secure two spots? Top 10? You need top 10, yeah. Um. I mean, Keegan should be an easy top 10, but this is that weird thing. Keegan is probably, in my opinion, mm -hmm. the safest bet to be top 10, but Roman is a much more interesting investment in looking towards 2022 because this championship had me thinking a lot about their um, that team medal mm -hmm. situation for them. They're vulnerable. If they had two They're spots, vulnerable. I would have named the team here and actually skipped over Nam. Yeah, I would have said, uh, absolutely, Roman and Keegan for the team. Is that feels, bad? I feel, I feel mean. I feel bad for Nam, even when I say it. Jonathan, sometimes well, I am like so cutthroat, and I could write it on paper why I would do it, but I feel... But Keegan is still just a stronger choice. And again... I guess because we can tell that Nam worked hard to improve, but to me, the things that are weak in Nam skating are still really weak, and they haven't really improved. I mean... And there is something to how the judges will perceive it. The judges are not interested in helping him. So he would have to deliver perfectly. And then even then, they're going to be, they're going to lowball those marks. Keegan, they like to reward. Roman, they like to reward. Nam and has a decent personality it, you know, on the ice. He kind of has a little like shtick, but I think it's just shtick at for this the audience. point. Yeah. Um, it's not for the judges. The thing is, is that his spins are really weak, even Tracy. Uh, was referencing yeah. uh, his spins here. Yeah. Um, I thought that... There's a, there's a, his hips don't seem to have like a settled rotation in them or pivot in them because it, it's like there's like... He leads with the forehead so much with his skating. And so it becomes aesthetically difficult, especially when the jumps aren't working. Yeah, he... It's a struggle. Uh, yeah, and when the quad salco doesn't work for him, that's been his money jump for so long and it's more of a struggle you know the posture isn't there in the skating he needed ballet lessons to really work into his height after he grew for quite a long time and it's just not there you could see that in conrad orsel too he doesn't ha know how to stand with his new height and he's open still, yeah, yeah he's, that ollie of openness that i yeah yeah you know and conrad it's, actually could create beautiful 
pictures and like Roman in a way yeah. they could both use that lanky quality to their advantage yeah it's just for Nam it still looks like he's doing the, the snapping to like cover up the fact that his posture is snapping so... is forward yeah. and the forehead it's that head has like a magnet towards the ice a yeah. little bit so, so it's tough it's tough because he seems to have worked hard, but I just don't see the upside of it. And of course, Keegan um, flopped on his quads here. And I know that Keegan had worked with Ravi uh, before Nationals a couple weeks ago. And I know that Ravi is someone who worked with Frank, and he's very much in that Frank style of skating. And I know that Keegan is also really one of the only high-level skaters at his rank in Alaska. I really think that when I see Keegan skating... He, we, he always is on the edge and he looks like he's going to make a mistake. It's wild. It's wild. So a lot of it seems to be from like a lack of discipline in his training, right? Like it doesn't seem like... He... Or focus. I, I think like he probably trains. So my understanding is that, you know, the doing the full run through every day may not be happening okay. so much, right? But it's not that he doesn't... It's not that he's lazy, but it's just in that disciplined order, which I think you can mm -hmm. kind of see, which then comes to the lack of focus and whatnot. And what I notice in his skating is that he'll be doing something. Say he's in a footwork sequence. The first third of the footwork sequence will be like nice knee bend, good posture, good extension. Then he does something kind of sloppy. Then the foot is flexed. Then he kind of will like overpower a twizzle and you think maybe he hasn't worked this footwork sequence in the program with the rhythm of this right like it's mm. just not not that it's not practiced but it's not trained as a part of the whole right and it looks like he'll overcook a twizzle and give it too much arm and then he well and it's interesting you're, yeah you're talking about that overcooking and what it reminds me of is when i saw caitlin osman live for the first time and it felt like every jump entrance was basically overcooked or in singing it felt like mm -hmm. pushing you know like the speed is so exciting but there's almost like a wild hurling of the body into an element that when it works is thrilling but in person it seems a little haphazard so the canadian technique tends to be a little bit more on a circle and they have really good skating skills in general but sometimes some of their technique is a little bit wild to our eye but in general i think that osmond may have be someone who would get over excited just in general um yeah yeah who has a lot of power they used to talk about that mary lou retton she has to control that power jonathan they've got those big power True. thighs and yeah. they just Mary Lou, she couldn't stick the ball, but she did it when it counted. And so did Caitlin Osmond at the 2018 World Championships. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's true. It's true. But controlling that adrenaline and that power that you get in competition seems for them to be a struggle. Um, but yeah. but Keegan, Keegan always, those spins, I mean, the speed, the edges, like that will always oh be God. there for him. Don't you just want to put Keegan in a ballet class for like a year? Be like, just don't be in trouble with Ke Keegan being like, we'll pay for your training, but you have to do this, this, and this every single day. And you have to just go to the like the Russian ballet teacher, someone, you know, who has lymphoma. Uh, you could be her last <laughs> student, you know? You the could dance be her... teacher from Drop Dead Gorgeous. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like her last, you could be her last student, Keegan. You know, the last thing that she's going to improve. Um, she knows it's over, you know? Okay. And, um, <laughs> you know, we can just work on you and you could just learn from her in this. It'll be like a Tuesdays with Maury kind of episode for Keegan Messing because Jonathan, he's a short guy. Not yeah. tall shaming, just saying like, the sky is blue, um, roses Keegan are red. Um, yeah. Keegan is not a tall giraffe like Conrad Orsel, right? right? So he has to make everything bigger in a Paul Wiley Skating big, totally. But sometimes Keegan does skate big, and then three steps later, he'll be hunched and sloppy looking. And it's yeah. just that consistent effort. It's that big and open instead of he emotes in like a cool kind of casual way where it's just a bit in and curved, you and know? I don't want to stereotype, but when, you know... Yes. <laughs> When your coach looks like he could be in one of those 80s rock bands, like um, 
Def Leppard or um, or was just married to Rory. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. When the coach looks a little bit wild, I'm not so shocked that the skating looks so wild. Meanwhile, Frank yeah. looks like he is um, dressed for church with his mother. And his right. skaters kind of skate like they're going to church with Frank's mother. And, you know, right. it's just a stylistic difference, but it's uh, interesting yeah. there. <laughs> um, totally, totally. And uh, I, I would like maybe Keegan to visit Frank's mother. Um, I just think maybe meditating past life regression. I we think that we could help Keegan just find yeah. his inner refinement, okay? Because. Totally. He has moments in his spins where... I think it's possible. It's there if he chooses it. Like this, yeah. he'll be doing something and the centering is so good. And the actual flexibility is good, but it's not pointed and given that just extra that'll take him from like a plus two to a plus four. Right. And that happens a lot in his elements that I notice. And then there's the actual inconsistency. And sometimes it looks like a lack of, you know, doing sections and run throughs from element to element and I think that's some of the wild because he has all the talent completely uh, yeah so but there is that always that feeling like you're on the edge you don't think you're ever going to make it through a Keegan pro without like some sort of wild thing I have right. to say the November rain I hope he keeps it I think it's fantastic mm, I love yeah. it you don't agree, but I... no, no, no. You know what it is? It's that both programs kind of like hit the same overall emotional takeaway. Mm -hmm. So I wanted some variance from him. He's such a fun guy. He could really go out there with an adventurous short program, and I would love to see that from him next year. This... I agree. I'm on board. Yeah, for the that. wedding song. It's a little like okay. well, he does that whole like Sam Smith. Like it's what yeah. does he do? in my bone. I mean, they all skate too. I want to jump your. It's bones, all that but... same kind of. Yeah vibe and Conrad again does the same kind of music as keegan who does the same kind right. of music right as Jer it's very jeremy abbott josh ferris -y, right and i think it's very like that emo age i think they are like even um amber glenn like skates to those kinds of like weepy you know singer songwritery ballads I, I have been hearing tracy chapman everywhere <laughs> since we talked about that I got a Give fast. Me a car. <laughs> Did you know that Fast Car is incredible? It was from '88. Like I, th I always thought that those two songs must have come out around the same time. Oh no, Jonathan! No, well, no she no. was a pioneer breaker from the beginning. Yeah. And though she's not an out lesbian, she did have a relationship with Alice Walker. So um, take it. Now it's you out will. there. <laughs> no, nope. she dabbled. Okay. She's she's fluid. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Fast Car is about wanting to get the hell out of somewhere. I never paid close enough attention, but I was like reading about this inner depth that Amber Glenn could be bringing to the ice. I believe it more than ever. Yeah. Amber Glenn. The more you think about it, the more you're behind Give me one decision. reason to stay here. <laughs> and I'll turn my back around. Okay. We'll give her a new beginning. I think that was the name of Tracy's album. Okay, new beginnings. <laughs> yes. okay. okay. Oh, so... Yeah, we need, Keegan needs a good short program, like a cool one. But Something I, to pop, yeah. But I think this November rain has not been skated to its full effect. But when we saw the the choreographic sequence in person, when the music kind of like swells and he kind of hits it, but you could tell it's not fully practiced and Paul Wiley out. Like any yeah. choreographed sequence needs to be stretched as much as Paul Wiley as if he's skating to Michael Bolton, okay? Like it needs to be bigger it needs to be grander like we and need... more confident it yes. is i mean it, right now it's a bit put on him like he's keeping up instead of owning it yeah so i mean obviously he suffered the loss of his brother so i'm sure that you have... i can't imagine how difficult that would be but... and then to try to keep that kind of motivation so i think in general grief hits people in stages right and i think immediately you have the funeral which is obviously the shock and very upsetting um, and then he was gearing back up for Skate America, which is kind of a distraction and right. trying to get through that. But eventually when you deal with a loss, you have to kind of deal with the it settles. Yeah. It's this, that, and that's kind of the hardest part when it settles. And I imagine that that's, what's kind of been happening. So I think that if they could, if they choose to send him to the world championship, see, I think he should kind of go into a, a boot camp before the four continents and then 
we can find this ballet teacher. I think he can make a lot of people happy in Japan with the right music and the right programs. Okay. I agree. I agree. He's very charming. There's a natural charm about him. Does he need and a there's... leprechaun program? Like, it could be cute, you know? I don't know. If, I, if we had trouble with Charlie Chaplin, what are we going to do with the Lucky Charms program? <laughs> Catch me Lucky Charms, Keegan Messing. Okay. Like, it would be a funny exhibition, though. <laughs> Listen, we could shtick him out for Japan. you got to give them a little camp, right? Yeah, exactly. Baby Japanese Yoda. people. Oh. <laughs> they're all like middle-aged women going for Winnie the Pooh. I mean, come yeah. on. you got to exactly. embrace it. Okay. okay. I think a Lucky Fine, Charms right. program is very appropriate for Japan. Get your gimmick. Get your gimmick. Okay. All right. So. Okay. <laughs> but okay. I, I like this November rain. I like his take on the hydro blade. I'm into it. Okay. Oh, the hydro blade was a different kind of. He hugged the ice from yes. it. Yes. It was like intimate, um, and even got up with some of the ice on the shirt. Um, there's something very, very special about him. That's, and it's different. You know, when we've talked about important skating, his skating seems seemingly mm -hmm. important. More important than than, for instance. Names. Someone who may have placed above him. Yeah. And, but I think Roman captures that same kind of... Roman expect. has it. Okay, he's on TV now and he's famous. And Roman, you have a YouTube channel. It's time. Man, concealer, and makeup. Yeah. And let's like... Yeah. Go, for the television. Just he looked like a little washed out on TV. And the eyes looked um, tough. Well, I have eye things too. I'm not judging. Not but like if I that. were on TV, like I would want this... Oh, yeah. padded down. Okay. Yeah. So we're not Beautiful. we're identifying. We're not judging. But Yeah. No, no, no. He's exquisite. Listen, if you're Brian Boitano, you spray on that hair. You do what it takes, okay? This is yeah. fame, Roman. Okay. You want that world team selection. Go glam. You want that. some concealer for the four continents, okay? I thought we could just make we can just it's called the glow up, right? That's that's what we need to do. <laughs> he looks ready though for his glow up. I I think he's yeah. settling into a very nice skater. Uh, yeah, a little wild uh, on some of mm -hmm. those triple axles, but oh, did Tracy love a triple axle here? She know whose triple axle she loves is your boyfriend Nick Nadeau. Oh, triple well, axle like because he's left-handed, so he's doing them all backwards too. But he was one that I was like, will someone make him a pair skater for a second? Like, come on. No. And she kept talking about a man of his size. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. There was age shaming. There was tall shaming. Oh, we yeah, loved Yeah, they were all about it. Yeah. We, could, we should talk about all the women that don't have any necks. I could give them some of mine. I have like yeah, extra right. necks to go around. So. It's good for seeing you, Dave. Keep it. Keep it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, oh, there are all these, these poor girls that don't have any necks in Canada. I know. Hard to look extended that way. No, that Emily Babcock, you know that she's probably, Ballback, whatever her name is, she's probably trying to extend all the time. It's, yeah. There it's are like, anatomical limitations, though. It's like yeah. that Courtney McCool. I swear it was just a head on top of shoulders. It was just very interesting with big feet. She's mm -hmm, a beautiful mm -hmm. gymnast. Okay. Anyway. Um, and your guy, Joseph Fon. Love. Yeah, it's a really nice free skate to the Emperor Concerto. It's really, really nice. Never heard of the Emperor Concerto before. David Wilson did a wonderful job. It was like a little bit of a touch of Patrick Chan, a touch of Brian Picard, a touch of, I don't know. You know what reminds me of Canadian gay men of the past that were like, with the good skating skills. I saw some Osborne Coulson in there. Oh, yeah. it was wonderful. It had me. a nostalgia quality to it. And like, that was big open extended skating. Oh, yes. It was like some of those Paul Wiley, Mary Scott Fold costumes mm -hmm. and the monochromatic. Where it's a like, full line, but yes. it makes a difference. Yeah. So he was injured. I know that he didn't have the best Junior Grand Prix, which, you know, Canada really cares about the Junior Grand Prix. When they talk to you, they're like, fire into the IJS. They're all about it. But he had an injury. Remember over the summer, he was only jumping triple loose. He's, yeah, he, he had a real up and down season. But I, it was my understanding, if I'm remembering correctly, kind of has an up and down reputation, even aside from the injury. Well, my I'm inner Martha that. Caroli thinks okay. that he has the talent. He, what does she have? Um, what would be the line? The international readiness. The okay. international, he has the international look, which people, some people say that that's shaming and that this is a terrible phrase, but he has it. Okay. Yeah. 
He has the je ne sais quoi. Okay. It's easy to like. It's easy to enjoy his skating. So now we need to get him the consistency and the proper training Health. and preparation. Yeah. And he will do the job on the oh. ice. Okay, yeah. Joseph? Yes, preparation. Yes, more consistency, more jumping, more landing every time. Okay? Yes, that's and no right. more of those those falls like he had. I can't remember if it was the flip or the lutz, and I was like, "Oh, yowzers!" Was not <laughs> the kind of performance we looking for, but <laughs> the potential. Yes, Joseph. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 darling. <laughs> have it. Yes, come to the ranch, and we will work. No, it's seven, closed, kiddo. <laughs> 700 long programs per day. I have lots of time. Don't have a doctor on hand, but <laughs> we will be doing it all. Oh, my God. I just finished that book about the Corollis. I think that's why yeah. it's on my mind. Okay. 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 I, I read Start by Believing. Some fascinating parts, some really depressing parts, some parts that make you want to throw up. I recommend it if you... Okay. You can can hear, handle that emotional journey. <laughs> you can hear your feelings, like it can. Okay. Yes. Okay. So anyway, but yes, he has that quality. Yeah, a hundred percent. to Frank in the desert. That Evelyn Kramer is there, who loves to work on the spins. Mm -hmm. He's like friends with all the famous gay man of yore, that Tab Hunter and Rob. I mean, she seems like she's like the fairy godmother to all the gays, right? Like, <laughs> Vintage. Yeah. I want like maybe. Oh, and Suzanne Summers was saying that she has a place in Palm Springs. So you could go visit Suzanne Summers and work Evelyn. those inner thighs. Yeah. Yes, the thigh master <laughs> for the conditioning. Uh -huh. And yeah. you could go outside and take some naked photos at 73. And That's right. Maybe Run she'll into you at a casino in Vegas. <laughs> yes, we did see her there. She could even let you give that 80 year old husband that like shot of testosterone that she gives him before they have sex two times a day. It's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. She gives it on Tuesday, great. so she can't walk on Wednesday so much. But it's okay. It's great. Okay. Um, I'm more of a Joyce to Wit personally, so there you go. <laughs> I've never seen, I, if I've watched it once, I've watched it 10,000 times. Have you ever watched that? episode when Suzanne had some sort of a maybe web series, although it seemed to be the only episode, where uh, Joyce DeWitt um, and Suzanne reunited after 40 years of not talking to each other. Of hating one another, yeah. I saw that Eat True Hollywood story, and so did you. Joyce frickin' hated Suzanne Summers. Understandably so. I mean, that would be a tough, that would be a tough situation. And though we like Suzanne, I do think she's a bit of a narcissist who maybe knew that she was looking better than Joyce, and she thought, why don't I invite Joyce on to grovel? And they, <laughs> they pretended that they she, had no and idea. she accepted, yeah. They accepted? Oh, you have to watch it. And they were like, why didn't we get along? I don't know. I think it was the men involved. Yes, they just, they went along with, Jonathan, you got to watch it. It is so good. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> oh, it fills me in all the right places. Okay. okay, okay. I love a Suzanne Summers. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Joseph Fan, <laughs> Suzanne Summers. <laughs> You are a Joseph fan of Suzanne Summers. There, there it is. There, oh, yeah. that was okay. some punny okay. stuff. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I really like him. Um, so Conrad Orsel, this is what's interesting to me about him. He is dressed so perfectly. And really, I would say um, the packaging is like exquisite for the short program. And then the free program is all wrong. It's like... The free wrong. is with the blue, the blue and the, then the black pants? Yeah. Okay. It just doesn't make him look elegant. It just made him look kind of workmanlike and... Haphazard, and yeah. Les Mis seems so tired. It didn't seem... He seems very nervous when he skates. And I just, even as I envision his skating now, it's tilted forward. Mm -hmm. Like the jumps were tilted forward. The skating was kind of tilted forward. I know. It's all there. There's another one. Yeah. The, it's a Torgashev Camden situation. Like, I, I see it. Can we send to Jenny Kirk? She could just tell him how attractive he is all the time. And maybe he'd be proud about it and stand up and skate with confidence. She'd be like, hey, girl, what is she yeah. doing? <laughs> she got that synchro team to second place. The other. She could work her magic on Conrad. 
Listen. Yes, they're... girl. Yes, girl is what she says. Yes, girl. Yes. Yes, girl. Yes. <laughs> they're kind of. Is her synchro team skating as sexy nurses? You know that they're skating to bad medicine, right? And they're all... Yeah, I saw some of the hair. That kind of surprised me for a Jenny team. Well, I don't. Listen, they're in Missouri. I think that there's only so much that they can do. They're doing the best they can, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Although apparently, I did hear a rumor. <laughs> That Josh is um, that Josh to- he's cute yeah he told him not to because um, he's very nervous and obviously Jenny has a little bit of nervous energy herself that they were saying uh, maybe not to have dairy the night before because they didn't want anyone to have any gastrointestinal issues or lactose you know <laughs> and really Michael Shanley everything. goes he's like yeah I'm sure those people from Missouri really liked when Jenny's gay roommate was telling them not <laughs> to, to-, to cut down on milk and cheese <laughs> yes it's like, can you imagine how that went over? He's like, you know, they Amazing. hate both of them. So, that's great. Okay. Or maybe they listen, and that's why they were second. Maybe that's maybe it was the key thing. All yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. Okay. But loving, <laughs> you know, like Conrad Orzel, he's got the great hair, uh, and Nick Nadeau. Mm-hmm. But this is we're getting to the place like in 2017 when he was fourth, he had landed the quad loop and he was doing he had like a real energy about it. And it seemed like maybe something could be possible here. But Canada's faced with an interesting dilemma in a couple of their disciplines where we're seeing some sort of maybe less relevant older skaters sticking around. Sorry, sticking around. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it seems like there is a pendulum swing of encouraging those uh, that may have the bigger long-term potential. And as a federation, I can't say I blame them. And unfortunately, someone like Nick Nadeau could get lost in the mix there. So not knowing what his family financial situation is, he's got, he's real attractive and he's a beautiful Mm -hmm. skater. I Mm -hmm. think Robin Cousins would love him. And Mm -hmm. I think he could be a principal with Holiday on Ice. I think we could put him maybe in the Torvald and Dancing on Ice show. I think we could have a big professional career. He's got beautiful skating and beautiful looks. And I think he's ready for the pro ranks. Stop falling on those jumps, okay? Like, you are too attractive. Yeah, unless unless he wanted to, I don't know. Um, Can I be his agent? Okay, this is what I would do A guy like that in Paris would be good. But, I mean, it might be too late. He may not want to. I would call Robin Cousins up. I would put him in Holiday on Ice. We'd put him in Dancing on Ice. And then we'd put him in that the next Ice Age, whenever they do the men skating, hashtag men skating. <laughs> like, I think, yes, he could do well, all. He has, he has a big fan following in Canada. Because remember, he was doing that kitschy Elvis program for so long, but the yeah, audience yeah. really ate it up. But So he could go thank Canada or be a minion of Tessa and Scott or something. I mean, maybe, maybe. We can look at yeah. it, but they're he not going to tour next year. Remember, yeah. they're never supposed to be touring again, Jonathan. That was their final performance. All right. Farewell, farewell, farewell. That's, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I really believed it. I was nervous. I was emotional about it. Yeah. Okay. I think maybe for the next tour, he could be a chorus. We could bring back the Ice Capets, all right? Instead, in Tessa Virtue's version, it could be all the hot men. We could have Conrad Orzel. We could, you know, with the good names. Yeah, exactly. We could have the Cana Danes. Come on, we could. Yeah, a whole thing. Who was there, apparently, on crutches. Yes, but Matt, apparently they love them so much they may still send them to the World Championships. I think they I should. think 100% they should send them to the World Championships, especially given the fact that they... Well, we'll get there. We'll get okay, there. we'll get there. All right. All right. So, the men... Do, I think we killed it on the men, right? We, we really... Uh, again, uh, um, I don't want to say surprising because we know these names and we know that they're enjoyable, but a delightfully... Um, Deep co- competition, an enjoyable watch for me. And Conrad always. really fought. You know, someone originally said he had the skate of his life, and then he had like some hand downs and stuff, but he yeah. did fight throughout it. So that was yeah. a step forward. And mm-hmm. Roman Sadowski was a fighter too. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, in the pair event, it was super interesting because it was really quite the showdown between Charlie and Luba and Evelyn and Trent. And mm-hmm. I felt like, I feel like we've really bonded with Evelyn and Trent because, of course, I watched Spinning Out twice. And I feel like we were skating outside on the lake together. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously mm-hmm. the show was filmed in Canada. They pretended like it was Sun Valley. And I just was thinking of them skating outside at night the entire time when <laughs> they were performing. And I was thinking, you can never... They were lovely and had a delightful skate for them here. 
But again, if I'm a federation, even though Luba, thank you, Rod, is very old, I think that their potential is so much greater and the investment in Luba and Charlotte is so much more important that I would absolutely, again, bypass the silver medal here and send them to Worlds and get them that exposure and get them that experience. I think they have the potential to do something absolutely phenomenal. I arguably enjoyed um, a lot of their skating more than um, Kirsten and Michael. I just think the overall skating skills, the you things that they can achieve. a hater. <laughs> the things that they could achieve, Charlie and Luba, and it was a distinctive look that was kind of elegant, classy. Some distinctive falls, I mean. Yeah, even. and they're very wonky, because even in those lifts that they were so, that magnificent lift at the end of the free, but like everything was just off in the free. And it's clear that things are still very clunky, but I'd rather see them be clunky. She and did her jumps, out. okay. She did. She, yeah, she, yes, I agree. Uh, the throws were, that was a tough one. Fine on the warm up. So, so that's another so kind in, of interesting situation. So in an international competition, I wonder if they would have finished ahead of Evelyn and Trent, but usually at a nationals, because of the way that they wind up scoring nationals, if you go clean and they tend to overscore components, which means that people who have better components wind up getting less of a, uh, advantage than they normally would. Mm. And with GOE. I think that Evelyn and Trent may have been artificially higher here, but it was also yeah. probably the skate of their lives. So, uh, which I think when you're considering these things, like we've done in the U.S. for um, you know the Olympics, when Mariah accidentally skated very well in 2014, you have to know when it's the exception to the rule. And again, if you're thinking about a future team event. You know, they're going to have to double up in the events they can. So in this situation, I think it is appropriate to name, I would name Kirsten and Michael to the world team. A hundred percent. But I would give this uh, the second spot at Four Continents, I think is appropriate. Um, Because I would want to see them one more time, just because Charlie and Luba did show more potential, but they Mm -hmm. didn't. It wasn't a slam dunk throughout the fall. They were still new. There's still some things that we're not so sure about. And Evelyn and Trent would be at the worst great alternates, but at the you know, but the thing is, is that Kirsten and Michael are anywhere between third and sixth, maybe right. Like that's really where they are likely to fall. Um, you think it could be as high as third? I think anything. I think it's possible. Do I okay. think they're going to wind up being third? Well, it's in. You know what? It's in Montreal. This is yeah. Very true. If ever I'm saying what's likely to happen, it's in Montreal. They skate clean. I think that they have a shot because though there are two Russian teams and a Chinese team that are have well, I kind would, of two Chinese teams that could be on that podium. Well, I'm talking about I'm thinking Sui and Han are gold medalist, right? Okay, so I'm okay. thinking that they're you know against um, the Moskvina, Boykova and Kozlovsky, um, probably Tarasa Morozov. Um, uh, Pong and Jin are kind of who they're battling with, right? In the way I'm seeing this. Okay. Um, I think that the Russians have a tendency to be inconsistent uh, at an event like that. You're against a Chinese team that does side-by-side doubles often as their first element. I think at home with momentum and scoring, if they have the two best programs of their lives... Maybe they could be like fifth in the short and come in for a bronze, like Mino and Sand action in 95 and 96. Uh, I think that that could be, maybe they could, I think for Kirsten and Michael, they could have like a small mistake in the short. And then, because you don't want to have them be like, think that they have the medal, because then I think that they might not do the job in the long. (laughs) So, (laughs) and they tend to seem to sometimes have small errors in the short program. So I think that they could climb i think that that would be the best that long program tends to be quite strong for them when uh grand prix final aside so i think that you have to look at who can be the second pair i think that luba and charlie have at least the potential to be seventh Um, i think judges would be happy to provide them with um more benefit of the doubt than they ever would with evelyn and trump so i think that in PCS, I mean. 
So Charlie and Luba are like a Hail Mary pass, right? They could be seventh. They could be 14th. I think with Evelyn and Trent, you kind of know they're going to be around like 12th 11. place, 10th, yeah, 11th, yeah. 12th, right? Like, you know, they're consistent, but they're not going to get the big points on the lifts or anything. I will say, yeah. what does Eric love to us? Eric loves when we say, in my opinion, even though this is an yeah. opinion show, in my opinion, Eric Radford did a very nice job with Evelyn and Trent's choreography. Agreed. Agreed. I liked um, his work. And it's not to take away, they really did have a nice moment here. They did yeah. their job. No, but I thought the choreography beautiful. when they were skating on the diagonal, uh, mm -hmm. it was quite lovely. And I was like, oh, he, I see point of view. I see some very, so in my opinion, Eric Radford, you did a very nice job in my opinion. You did it, yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought it was rather lovely. Um, she does have those like really pronounced Canadian female eyebrows. Did they pencil it in or dye it? Someone was trying to explain this to me, what it is. It's like a different aesthetic in Canada. Like if they dye the hair, they dye the brows. It's always, but I always see brow first with her. It's very, but they're not like and bad now brows. I, now just... I just see that character. Oh. Now I just see Cat. Oh or whatever. Can she is. please bite herself in next year's, they should do black swan and just have like some red scratches on the top of the back of the dress. Okay. Yeah, or in the kiss and cry instead of like the ear thing. Like oh, like... I would love it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. What was it, the beginning of that program where they do the tango and she does the thing with her fingers? Yes. I think they have to work with Sarah Kawahara from now on. She had I mean, one would assume. <laughs> yeah. They had all those interesting, at least for a short program. Eric, I'm not yeah. taking your job away. You can do the free program. Sarah yeah, Kawahara totally. can do the short. Okay. We and it would be so much PR about it. And all the PR about that, spitting yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Have you watched Cheer yet, Jonathan? No, but I'll tell you what, um, my roommate Melinda was watching it tonight and she was like, have you heard about Cheer? And I was like, shut up. Everyone keeps telling me about it. I just haven't like settled in to watch it yet. Does she like it? Um, yeah, she was like, she finds it fascinating. Tell her I think that she looks like she could be a flyer. Monica okay, would say that Melinda it. has the look. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. All right. There's one girl named Morgan. She has horrific tumbling oh. and, and, and leaps. But she has the look, and she's a good flyer. Oh, and what does Monica keep saying? That she, um, she's a pleaser, a.k.a. she mm -hmm. can manipulate the you-know-what out of her. So Monica okay. likes her. Okay, so, got it. Got it. Yes. And Your message will be relayed. <laughs> she'll love it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, so Deanna and Maxim, she had the injury. And, of course, she's really old, as we know here. As they really, like, back to the Canadian Championships with old Deanna, but a new partnership. So they were like, so ah. fascinated by her. They have not paid attention to her because she was American and they're Canadian. So over the last three years, they have never watched her. And they were like, there's an old biatch who is skating in Paris. And they have so much fluff material. Like, they didn't even know what, how to cram it all in because they were talking about her with the World Junior Championship medal and her as a novice. And then this revisionist history, she only competed one season with Nate last year. And then also the new story that emerged was she's skating again because there was a work retreat where they were doing like dream vision boards. That is she, true. Oh, see, they played that down. I thought it was that oh she wanted God, to Jonathan, skate. I've interviewed Deanna a couple of like, times. But... I know, but I thought it was the coach that was like, go try this. Like so it was her first, but first Deanna had yeah. the work retreat where she got all in her feelings about how there's one thing that she feels like she could finish skating again. So then she did. And then she went down to Florida and she was working with Cindy and then Mitch. Yeah, was but was there. it about the Olympics or was it about skating? I mean, it's always about the Olympics, but I, I think mean, it was about enough. both. Okay. 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 I mean, I feel like when you have that much intensity as a human being, it was, <laughs> but what I thought was interesting is that, I was like, is Deanna being really savvy? Because this made me crack up when they said that her favorite skater was Megan. Megan Duhamel. Because she does admire Megan, but you know that that girl, like, I think that she was asking Deanna to work with her when she was still competing. Like, she, yeah. when she found out that Alexa was working with Deanna, she was like, Mitch, when do we get to work? Do we all get to work with Deanna? Like, she definitely, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what Deanna was all about Aliona. So I thought that that was fascinating. 
Plus, yeah. I, I think that Aliona should come back. I mean, Bruno is the only one who's stopping her in that article, and I think that he needs to get it together, okay? Yeah, although she knows how to just pick some random guy and make it happen Listen. anyway. <laughs> he was a stem for five minutes. He keeps on having right. all of these children. They're not going to pay for themselves. She will get you to prize money. You literally have to throw her. Let No one's asking you to perform, Bruno. Like, you yeah. just look at No one's even asking you to throw her well. She'll figure it out. She'll, She'll figure, figure it out. out how to land it. Yeah. I know you're probably a skater who thinks it was about you, but it was never about you. It was always about yeah. her. And right. it was her birthday yesterday. And I really think that she should come back. And I read a Rodina this. Yeah. I think she could beat Sui and Han again. I really I think, think. Potentially. I think they're better. Well, she knows how to stay healthier. She knows how to land her jumps. Listen, that, that's what, that's nothing how that I want to see more than like a 50 year old Aliona Sevchenko with like, you know, when Russian women smoke a lot and they get skinnier and skinnier as they get older. Like, I want her to be looking like real gaunt, <laughs> landing like some quad throws. <laughs> and yeah, amazing. Right. <laughs> Even though it's not worth it for the point, she would still do it. She would yeah. do it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, oh my goodness. Could you imagine? She could team up with Nick Nadeau. She could teach Nick Nadeau how to do it. She would jump in the other direction for Nick Nadeau. Okay. <laughs> And land it. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Come on. All right. Yeah. We could. I, I'm, I'm here for it. Okay, Bruno, let's get it together. You come okay. back. Listen, people aren't going to care about you in the shows. It's a very short shelf life. Relevance, fame is. What is it? Famous. Get it bitch? while you can. Isn't it that yeah. the word? Or love is a bitch. The Jason's short program, whatever it was. Well, fame is a oh, bitch. Oh, that's too. right. Yeah. So, I, you know, people aren't going to care in five minutes. So, you, what you have to do is win another medal, at least. And to you extend the pro career. So right. when when? Listen. We'll even pretend like you're the star of the team. I wouldn't go that yeah. far, but anyway. No, but yeah, they gotta go back to that tango program because I still feel left when they ditched it. Okay. I just want them to do the Olympic program again with all the feelings and the whole okay. all the shapes. Infinity symbols. Yeah. <laughs> the infinity symbol. The reaching in the, the stairs. Yeah. Do you think Aliona has thought about new shapes? I bet she has. I bet she had I nine bet it never, she never stopped thinking about it. Do you think she was on bed rest for any point of her pregnancy where she was like, Liam, I think I have new shape. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> I imagine she was up, you know, doing all those feedings because I bet she breastfed because she wanted to lose the calories so she could bet on the ice quicker. So I think that she was probably... But like, speaking of pairs, it was actually really cute to see um, all the pictures of Megan and Bruno with their daughter and the kiss and cry and stuff like yes, bundled I mean, up like crazy. It was adorable. Megan Duhamel's daughter would be at nationals before she's a year old. Like, of course she should be. <laughs> That's so appropriate. You just bring her to the kiss and cry. Like, yes! Free, free, okay. free juvenile. <laughs> oh and Megan, Megan and Eric are going to be skating in Stars on Ice again uh, together. Oh, okay. So, yes. But, yeah, Megan there, here, she was uh, coaching Kirsten and Mike along with Bruno. I mean, Victoria S., okay? So, <sighs> I liked KMT's free skate, Jonathan. I know that you... And that's fine. Well, I did, all right? I was... It's lovely. I was impressed with Michael. I was surprised she popped. She's in her head more this year about some things. I listened to that interview with Anastasia with her, and she kept talking about how old she was and about how none of her friends are still skating anymore. She's at that weird point where it's like, yeah, you were the really good skater, and all of your peers have moved on with their lives. But you know what, Kirsten? This means that you are... You're the A in the litter. You were the top one. Like, you just won another national championship. Yeah. Yes. So... They you were in the Grand Prix final. Like, come on. I, but you know what? They made one mistake, but the rest of the program was skated very confidently and mm -hmm. beautifully, and it got stronger and stronger as it went along. So, uh, And he really looked rather steady here. So I think that this is good. They didn't peak at nationals. There is point to improve. We know Canada and Montreal, they're going to be full of their feelings, as only Canadians can be at a home world. A world in Canada is like... It used to be like a world. Let's, I'm sorry. Can we talk about it for a second? Worlds in Canada is expensive. I know. I haven't decided if I'm going or not yet. I mean, again, when we were looking at those ticket prices, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Expensive and then I and thought, cold. Maybe. okay, can we talk yeah. about that too? Montreal in March. Not so yeah. Warm. Yeah, that's tough. I do not enjoy cold weather. It is very cold right now. It's cold enough in the rain, right? Like, come on now. 
so I was so tired today. I've been exhausted. Um, I actually drove to the rink. I was going to skate, and then I saw a bunch of s small girls carrying their little skating boxes on the rink, and I looked at it, and I was like, I can't do this today. And I turned around and went home and took a nap. Anyway. But you if, needed that nap. I don't know how you do it. I, every time I look down, there's like another see alive this, there's another you video that, like this. I don't know where you find all the time. <laughs> well, I was tired because on Saturday... I wind up skating like three different sessions because we I have a, my lesson with Kristen Frey. She took my lesson again. It could have I could have had Igor, but scary Kristen did the lesson. We worked on our brackets. She seemed rather more pleased. Um, Good. Although we had a moment when I said she was talking about a leg position. She's all about you know the toe to the heel, and I said, do you also want the toe to the heel on the double threes? And she was like, let's stay on task. I was like, I pay you two dollars a minute, honey. Like, <laughs> love her. She's trying to yeah. lose twenty pounds by her birthday. Apparently, it's on the. It's a. I'm like, I hope my birthday's like only in two years from now. <laughs> she looks very thin now, but she's an okay. ice dancer. You know that those girls have all the dieting secrets. Okay. 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 I think she's gonna do it. Okay. She's. Okay. Well, best of luck. I hope she achieves whatever it is she's looking to do. <laughs> yeah, I do too, but you know what? Those lessons, are, they're intense, but you know what? We're getting mentally tough, okay? We are d organizing it. She's and heel like, to toe. Jonathan, you would love it because she gives a lot of information, okay? She's like, you want to feel that trap squeezing when you do that bracket turn. And you know what? I make sure, okay? It's like... I like, make it squeeze, make it squeeze. Okay. Make it squeeze, Okay. <laughs> How come the Russian man is like the easier one? Uh, I was, we were going through, I was asking, I was asking yeah. more about who coached them in ice dance. And he first learned from Oleg Epstein, who coached with Marina. Then he was going through a bunch of lists and I was like, hmm, that coach is banned. Hmm, that coach should be banned. Like we had all the characters. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's great. okay. All right. Anyway, so I've been working on my power poles um, to make, cause I, you have to, even though they were already a move in silver, they become combined with something else later on and they have to be really good and they're a good warm up. But it's like getting your skating thigh back. I'm like getting my Tanya okay. Harding thighs. Oh, and, nice. <laughs> and I do the same kind of warm up when I go on everything and I've been overworking them. I think I'm dead because I was obsessing over power poles on both legs because my right leg is not so comfortable compared to my left so interesting okay. and i did pilates yesterday okay oh on top of it all okay <laughs> all right so i'm like i got in my ten thousand steps <laughs> that's what i did okay listen i told you love a pilates class on the reformer oh okay yeah via pilates love it anyway so <clears throat> What discipline are we talking about? I think that was Paris. That's Paris. So I think we should move on to... Wait, do we have any else? other questions about the Paris? We had... Oh, wait. Deanna, Luba, missing her throws at the end. I, I was... But I would still... I still am a proponent of sending her to Worlds. Will all three go to Four Continents? Yes. No, Charlie is okay. known for being a little bit of a temper. We can say that from the Julianne article. So I was like, how long is he going to be patient with Luba? Or was this yeah. his fault on the throw? I don't know. We saw lots. Be careful because she's a star. And I, they're, they're, but again, it's that Marie France packaging. It's just a different aesthetic. There's some nice, like, soft. I don't know. I see big term potential if they can work I, out these I games. thought of you every time I saw Julie Marcotte. Every time I thought of Jonathan Byer. Okay. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? I'm sure she's a lovely person. <laughs> um, I thought of it all. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I thought Deanna. I noticed, I noticed the difference in those programs. You know, I mean, you see a, the Marie France program and you see a Julie Marcotte program. I just happen to be much more drawn to one than the other. I mean, look, I loved the Julie. I liked the Kirsten Free program. I'm. I did have it That's on my. Great. I have it on my phone. Like I love the music, the whole deal. Um, I think that if anyone knows uh, the ending song to episode four of Cheer, I think it's like. <laughs> That will be Kirsten's next program because that seems okay. something that she would absolutely skate to. Um, okay. Anyway, right Note when, to self, don't download the soundtrack to Cheer. Okay, great. <laughs> right in the scene at the end of Cheer, when Lexi, the blonde girl who said that she would be in jail if not for cheerleading, is talking about those naked pictures of her that some girl she doesn't even know leaked online. I was very confused when she said some girl I don't even know. 
Well, obviously you do know her. You used to fight her. That's someone you've met, honey. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> we were trying to like street speak, and it was a little confusing. I, I don't think that works in a police report when you say. Yeah. That's not a very good description. They need, yeah, they need the subtitles for it. Also, <laughs> that the trend. That police officer seemed more excited about the cheerleading than he did about the actual police report. I mean, come on. That's that's a good arrest. She was underage. That could be a child pornography. You could have extra tickets for that. Okay? More so. God, Dave, I have no idea what's happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. You need okay. to get into cheer, okay? Okay. okay? Apparently, she's back on the team. Spoiler alert. Who knew? Anyway. <laughs> I didn't say I was never going to watch it, Dave. <laughs> okay? I mean, do you even know about Ladarius and Jerry? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Anyway. Let's do the dance because yes. your Piper and Paul had one of my favorite uh, little malfunctions, and I'll say why. It's because it was oh funny. Gosh. It was yeah, interesting. Yeah, ended up being fine. Yeah, no one got hurt, and it wasn't on an element, so it was fine. Okay. Yeah. We can all enjoy it. We can enjoy it without even people being like, "She got hurt." Does anyone know what she was mouthing? Because she was definitely in the slow-mo. She was saying something. Like, I don't know if she was saying I'm stuck or she was trying to play it like a gag, but she she handled it so remarkably well because... What did it get stuck like on hair. a rhinestone? Like, what was... It was hair... On his button. Her hair on... On, on his... Uh, yeah, so it was on the chest, not the arm at first, like I think I thought. So I think they'll probably remove that. But I don't know. Was it... Was it her hair contraption going on that caused it? Or was yeah, it a well, button? I'm sure it's like aqua netted to death because it's such a cool look and she wants it to stay in place. But... Was it the fault of the button or was it the fault of her hair? That is the real question. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tough. Listen, we'll get like Kate Penner messaging us being like, how dare you blame her hair? It was the button. Okay. That is like, <laughs> not feminist. But it could be like, it could have been a bobby pin even or something that got stuck. You don't know. Yeah. I mean, the kind of problems that figure skaters run into. I mean, you know. I know it did have, it did reek of that later Hosen moment in um, Cutting Edge. Oh no, yeah. <laughs> but, but, and that's the thumbnail I think of the video that I saw was of the hair being pulled. It was fun, it was a good program. Yeah. It made their event, it made them more interesting, right? Mm -hmm. It made their mm -hmm. win more special. Yeah. Do they have what it takes to medal at Worlds? It's going to be close. It's going to be interesting. It's going to keep the Worlds. I think the judges won't go with it. I think it's a, I think it's a lovely program. Mm -hmm. It's not actually my favorite of theirs because they've done so many great ones, but I enjoy it. I, I think the judges, unfortunately, won't, won't let it fly on the podium. I think it's their year. If it okay. happens, it'll come to... They're skating very strong. I was looking at their unison... Everything looks very organized at this point in the season compared to even last year, the year before. It, they look settled this season. Yeah. Um, I don't know politically if that will happen. but uh, and, and that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. But it does seem like they are on track. And mm -hmm. I'm curious to see how they will compete. Judging aside, just watching them against Chalk and Bates and Hubble and Donahue at the Four Continents, I think will be a really interesting matchup between the three. To me, that we're watching the bronze medal battle at Four Continents. Even though I would like to see any of those teams push for silver, I think politically they've wedged it, so it's going to be hard to displace Russia. I think it's um, an important competition yeah. at uh, the event to kind of see who's going to have Compared to what the other disciplines might feel in an event like Four Continents, mm -hmm. dance, it's like brutal. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it'll be interesting. Because those to see what three it does. are all, they all have different strengths and weaknesses, and Piper, and all worthy of world medals, quite frankly. They just look very organized. The unison work, I thought in the sh in the rhythm dance, was quite effective for me here. And this viewing, I was like, hmm, this is, I could get behind it. I actually get behind the rhythm dance more than the free. The free is very nice. It's not offending anyone. But it is yeah, it is sort of like a um, relaxing kind of feeling, and which is tricky when you're doing something like a free dance because you just kind of settle in and go on this wave that does end very quickly and is very entertaining, but it doesn't, it won't incite showmanship like the um, exotic program of Madison and Evan. 
I mean, yeah, only human I mean, when she does some of those moves, Jonathan, like, and the end, like it's going to end with a bam in your face. We're back to that um, Ilyenik and Katsalapov versus um, the French. Fresh lot and Borza. Yeah, and Borza. It's one's very meta. Justice for Natalie, Jonathan. Okay. I know. I, I'll forever remember when you put that thumb of her, the thumbnail of her at Worlds with the bronze. It's still one of my favorites. How about when, or was it the, also the thumb of her at the Trophy Eric Bompard when she was mad about that? But you ever see the fluff piece where they make a mistake and she like shoves Fabienne? <laughs> It's like, be careful. He's creating these programs and here. And Igor is trying to calm her down. Oh, my goodness. Maybe you want to learn French right overnight. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Love her. Love Natalie. Okay. Da, 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 da. The whole, oh, I mean, it's about Le Petit Prince, Jonathan, okay? Yeah. And he it was really the boy was... in the rocket ship, and she was the rose, okay? Yeah, I mean, but it's heady, and in its own way... Piper and Paul is more of a heady experience than something that's a, a little more showy, like Evan and Madison. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I'm yeah. excited. It'll be, it'll be an exciting four continents. I keep hearing, I know that you probably hate the movie, but I ate at Gaga's father's restaurant the other night, and I keep hearing Gaga sing those other songs when in the cafeteria at work they must have only certain songs from Stars Born that are playing on the satellite channel because <laughs> it is. I'm like oh my goodness there are so many songs from this piece of music that they could have had a very nice kind of moment that's more similar to maybe what they were doing going for the 2016-2017 season where it's more cohesively together. I actually think the problem with their free dance is that country rock song. I think it's the song and then the style of skating. I think well, because it sets a theme that is is not really followed through. And the or skating what we is want. Like, has like short stops, like choppy, like yeah. side to side. And the thing that I think about Hubble and Donahue, what makes them so special? Are you hearing me, Mrs. Hubble and Mrs. Donahue? Because <laughs> you get very offended is that I think that they have beautiful big lobes when they skate. Incredible. And, and their skating tends to go for something soft that allows for a lot of knee bend and allows for a lot of flow. And big, big, yeah. Because moves. they have nice edges and nice patterns and you want music that isn't going to cut that off. And when you have the country rock, it has short stops to it. And to me that... Which seems compensatory for something they don't have to compensate for. Or I was just going to say it's the opposite of what their strength is. It's actually cutting down their strengths. So yeah, yeah. when we look at that Muzak Bohemian Rhapsody, that allowed for the, uh, the big... Can we, okay, moves. can we talk this out for a second? Yes. This team... Marjorie uh, the second... Lejoie and Zachary Lacroix, or however you say <laughs> his name, yeah. The Marjorie and Zach, because I never want to pronounce his last name. Okay, yes. Okay, I have to look at what it was again. Um, Leg, but hers is -A so memorable. Okay, it's L E G H A. They are from Quebecois hell. Okay, trying to say okay. that last name. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, those are at least it's something. I wonder if that's a different nationality. Um, I don't. I would like to understand what it is that everyone else sees. It's it's hard for me. In her? Uh, well, because he looks pretty, like in the Bohemian Rhapsody in particular, he's kind of choppy. Okay. Like he seemed very I'll, off kilter, very like eyes. kind of He did balanced. have some stumbly moments and I think the adrenaline was kind of- For sure, the one where they were approaching the, the judges, but the, just in general, he's, his balance seemed high. So to me, she looks like aesthetically is like a shorter Tessa Virtue with blonde hair. She's in between, she has like some Maya Shibutani aspects and some Tessa Virtue aspects. She doesn't have enough of the Tessa Virtue showmanship. Mm. Like she is never going to put her crotch in your face on a rotational lift. Okay. <laughs> she needs more of that. But anyway, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. but she's more facially engaged than Maya Shibutani was right. Like Maya was just kind of pleasant but she has more showmanship, but she doesn't have enough. Like there's a 
Scale. But there was a sharpness in the Shibutanis that I'm not getting from this team. But I, I see I, the potential in her. You do. Okay. But I want an acting class and I want some more time spent with that hip hop teacher to really bring out her inner diva. Okay. Because they have. And some. what about the skating skills themselves? Talk, talk me through it because I'm not saying it's. So this I is not the best I'm just outing. Saying, but I don't understand it. They won yeah. the Junior Worlds last year and they were very nice. Uh, okay. This was Which we would have watched. I remember like enjoying, but even last year, I remember being like, feeling like I was supposed to like them and not quite seeing the thing. I watch her more than him, just as a okay. general, which is okay. good. I think as we're, as we're accustomed to in traditional partnerships. Yeah. Um, well, not in an Igor team, but uh, okay. I think that, <laughs> I think that she has something. You know, if she could spend some time with Tiffany Stiegler and really learn how to, like, caress the man and tussle his locks and do all of that kind of showmanship things, they because they, they're missing a little bit of that, and this is Ice Dance. Yeah. You need a little razzle-dazzle, honey. This is, yeah. This is not the discipline for the introverts, okay? And, uh, the, and the queen medley just kind of, like, crap, like came down on them a little bit. Not my favorite music choice. I really feel yeah. like Marie France is like recycling the the Stars on Ice programs for ideas sometimes. Well, this or is... trying to get them to maybe come out of a shell or something. It could have been to inspire more performance quality, but... Are we going to see a lot of Elton John programs even more next year after the movie? You know how skating likes uh, to be like two seasons behind the times. Yeah, so. exactly. Because this is, is this about the Queen movie? Is this why this program happened? Yeah, it could be. Then I I cannot wait for the Aretha program. Okay, yeah, I, we're ready for that. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel like Marie France loves a natural woman, and she will have either Olivia Smart or Madison Hub will be R E S P E C T. It's going to be Madison doing like an Aretha medley. I can I can see it now. Or Olivia Smart. It's one or the other, right? Okay. She's, She's going with it. But okay. <laughs> Marie France would love it. Okay. She's all about it. J HUD. As long as we don't have to see a cat's program. But Oh my gosh. You you tell Jim right now. Jim, no. Jim, no. Horrible views. <laughs> we need the spray. Oh my God. <laughs> no he, cats music. He texted immediately when Deanna missed the throw. Ugh, and so did his friend Carrie. Okay, I love it all. Oh my gosh, the two of them. Okay. I love how competitive people are in skating. I mean, it's great. Okay, they they seem close. It's what um, really propels them forward. Yeah, it's, it seems to drive a lot. Yeah. We love skating. Um, anyway. <laughs> now, now, riddle me this. So, Canadians not going to Four Continents. So, if he's on so, crutches, what is the like? What is the recovery right. time like? Like, when are we able to bend the because knee? Because it does seem like I a hundred percent. If everyone is healthy. No question, send the Canadians as basically the second Canadian team. Um, but that is asking for a fast turnaround if he's on crutches at the moment. So can we discuss this too? Because I was remem- I was thinking about them and was reminded of Spinning Out. Do you remember in Spinning Out that Jen, the friend, thought that with he the was... Hip. Yes, with the hip injury, thought that the pair guy was hot first, right? And then Kat slept with him. I feel that I thought that Nikolai Sorensen was hot first when he let me borrow his jacket when I was swimming in Montreal. But your love of them has, like, usurped. Like, Jonathan... Well, you know what it was, Dave? I was really obsessed with them around that time. When, when they were Weren't you still more into Denmark. Morgan Cipras then? Like, wasn't he your hottie then? Matteo was always my hottie. Your, Matteo is your hottie. And you liked Morgan a little bit, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, Not so much anymore, but you know. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Although apparently he's going to be coaching at Europeans, but he vague. He was like vague about it on Instagram. They're not listed as competitors, but he's coaching the other teams because that seems great. I mean, you're just giving Christine Brennan material left and right. Okay, this is, right. you know how Christine yeah. is. Hi, Jonathan. Yeah. Hi, Christine Brennan here. Hi. Yes. <laughs> In the pink blazer, the pink power blazer. With the shoulder like, pads. Yes. Yeah, okay. 100%. Yeah. The unmovable, like, news anchor Is Christine taller here. than you are? No, but she, there's something, oof, I can't even believe I'm about to say this. There's something about the aesthetic that, Feels. I will never say this to her, that reminds me of my mother. Oh, really? <laughs> like, the height, the presentation, like, like. 
Is your mom like, hi, Christine Brennan here, hi. No, she doesn't have that element, but something Oh, you're great, like Jonathan. Height, Jonathan, so. oh, you're great. Jonathan singing yeah. those notes. Oh, I love it. Okay, yes. Oh, too funny. I do funny. love me some Christine, yeah. Oh, dude, how about that article with the Mark Ladwig quote? Oh, that was some good pair of stuff too this week, okay. Wait, tell me what the one was this week. It was the one with where Mark Ladwig said, well, sometimes the pair guy's hand just slips. And, you know, that that's what... And he said it at a meeting where he was, like, in an official capacity at the AAC. And you know that if he's removed, Emily Hughes would take that position? I mean, just give it to Emily Hughes. Are you kidding? She worked for Google. She went to an Ivy League school. She's a Hughes sister. I... She would never say something like that. They would never say something like that. Justice for Emily Hughes. You put her in there, U.S. figure skating, okay? She's like... She'll be an alternate yet again. <laughs> really come in and do an admirable job. Yes! She will come yeah, in. Totally. She will miss the opening ceremonies for the AAC, and she will do a great job, Okay. You put that Emily Hughes in there, okay? U.S. figure skating. I mean, Mark is nice I mean, when he's not saying stupid comments, but, you know, he's just, he talks. And that was, I don't think, you know, he apologized, so credit to him for it, but it was, he said it. It didn't look good, yeah. Just, just, I don't think we should, like, cancel Mark Ladwig. I just think that he... Isn't the person that could be quoted in a situation like that. I think Emily Hughes would be a much better representation of... um, Mm -hmm. The kind of what they're looking to, yeah, exactly. Okay. On that note. <laughs> On that note. Yes, but that article was quite the page turner. I was like, okay. Because usually I have about a 10 minute window after I get out of the shower. And it was like, I saw the Christine article. And I was like, oh shit. Because I usually run to go get my coffee. I, okay. I read that Christine article like with a with mental highlighter, like going through okay. it instead of getting my coffee that morning. It was all the caffeine I needed. We make okay. sacrifices, priorities. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Got me through those power poles. Anyway. Okay. For the dance here for Caroline and Shane, at least they have four continents because I feel like this team has worked hard this season, but they've been struggling for the last two, two and a half years, right? Like they again, had... in, if you're the federation here, you're really thinking about building, mm-hmm. and again, build that junior team. You are, I mean, the, the, mm-hmm. the former junior champions. Well, they get three like, teams, but I think that Caroline and Shane, there's something amiss. Because well, even, they get the three teams, but hopefully, I think Canadians yeah. will get that third spot for Worlds. Because so. they can, because again, Canada, like in the pairs, they're up in a tough situation to get three dance teams for next year right yeah um if they only do have two dance teams it'll probably be the canadanes and piper and paul next year and then they'll get three spots probably for the olympics this year i think maybe the canadanes probably their best bet if they can be healthy and skate otherwise send the three teams but for caroline and shane it's interesting because they do they they started with more momentum than they have now, but it's just they haven't progressed or they haven't progressed quickly enough. Or they're and I feel in difficulty. dance, you're given that window of opportunity to make your move, and if you don't make the move, you're just like nailing the coffin on middling for forever. I, it's hard to know what the problem is, right? But they don't have the the unison on some of the twizzles, and it's just you see the little things. Obviously, Shane had a a fall here, and but I'm prone to seeing them. As I recall them, there are often unusual and surprising errors yeah. that have had full-blown errors. I know. Are they going to that Stephanie Handler? That Can they go like once a day, twice a day on the lunch break and the over morning coffee instead of... Text, getting, text like, at night. Yeah. Text. Like they have a lot of talent and I think that they could do it. And yeah. they have more showmanship than Marjorie and Zach. But there's something that's not gelling and there are so yeah. many teams in there you don't want to see them get lost so either they have to they have to organize something whether it's the coaching environment whether it's because uh, i wondered should they go you know train next to piper and paul Do they, are they the type of team that needs to be have more individual attention yeah or and with the, with the kinds of errors they make they make me wonder is this a training issue or is this a when you get to performance but something about it makes me think that this is how the training goes as well yeah it's not it's not like they were totally fine and then we don't know what happened so then do we need couples therapy together and change the training just couples therapy i mean it's something we need to get something yeah. to get it all together because 
Their window is closing. But it's almost there. The Tom Jones program was better than last year. They sold me on the sex bomb by the end of the season, so... But with the Canadiens, I mean, again, and this junior team now, they're going to, it's going to be easy to push them out. So. I know. Them's the the breaks, okay? Yeah. (laughs) Speaking of, did you see the video of the junior pair team that fell? Okay. Dave, you know, sometimes I have wondered, like, we know about the twists, and fortunately, we don't have much footage or experience seeing failed twists but this was so it was an accident he tripped and he did try to catch her but what can you do i I mean he was so far away from her by that point so the falls that hurt in skating more are when you fall straight right you want to try to slide and she came from quite high she like belly flopped almost so definitely hurt her wrist and her knee I don't know if she hit her. You couldn't really tell based on the video. But I thought, okay, we live in a litigious country. But I couldn't believe that the ref allowed them to actually compete. To me, that... That's ridiculous. And and I'm did, sure they wanted to. I'm sure they wanted to. I'm sure she was like, I got this. I got this. Well, and reading like, Larry Nasser book, I mean, all those girls yeah. would have competed too. Okay? Right. Like... Right. All right. Dr. Larry's letting him go out on the ice. He said, sure. You know, like, but I'm thinking like, hello, safe sport. Like anyone, are you kidding me? And then they showed it on TV and it's like that you want to burn that video. You, (laughs) the fact that they went out and compete and like, oh, well they withdrew from the free. No shit. They withdrew from the free. Okay. Yes, exactly. Um, horrifying. And, and you know what? Obviously, what a scary, horrendous thing to have happened to her. That would be so scary. I can't imagine the guilt and the horror a part- if I was a partner that did that. And of course, it was a total accident. I would feel so horrible. Yeah. But so that, horrible. But then I think you have to look at the Canadians, the coach. And, I mean, and you think, like, where are the parents? But then you read the book. The parents are half the problem sometimes anyway. I don't know these right. parents, but I'm saying in general, right. the parents... It's a possibility that a parent would, would be one of the encouragers to try to push through. Well, if you let your 13-year-old daughter do pair skating, you might also think that it's fine to compete after that kind of a fall. So, I right. mean, look, you're, you're deep in at that point. You know, Jonathan, you, are, you have lost rea- a sense of reality a long time ago. Okay? You think yeah. pairs is fine... Well, it was back with the... Um, She'll shake it off. <laughs> we kind of got into it with the Hanyan um, and um, you. Yuzuru um, concussion, right? Wasn't it a concussion? Yeah. But along the um, Ashley and Tim situation at Zagreb, I mean, yeah. see, the referees, I, I'm curious what the exact verbiage is there because they're going to have to take a look at that. Yeah. It does not look good on them. So I think that their focus should be maybe more on the athlete safety and less on the cheating judges. I mean, come on. I mean, this right. was a dereliction of duty. It was I mean, scary. Yeah. yeah. That it was very scary. Yeah. Anyway, moving on to the ladies. So Gabby Dillman actually had decent practices at. And a decent. Warm-up. I was going to ask you. I didn't see the practice sessions here, so I didn't know All how those. All reports were they up. were definitely a lot stronger than the performance. Okay. I just think that it's not surprising, right? Because whoever is leading this, they keep doing these short, intermittent things and then everything is fine i mean how many times has gabby said that she wasn't going to be posting on instagram or wasn't going to be editing her photos and then like a day later it's the most edited thing you've ever seen obviously if that's what's happening on social media and all of the up and down what do you think is happening personally or in the training rink or whatever i mean there's clearly a reset that needs to happen. And right. she is still... A reset. And it was interesting because Tracy was trying to, um, in her own way, be kind, but a little bit firmer about the situation. And she's yeah. like, she pulls out of all the competitions she's done. She said something like in the last two years, yeah. she has withdrawn 
from more competitions than she has competed in. And it was under the guise every time that she withdrew that she was going back to the drawing board. She was resetting. She was doing it. It's a bit in its own way, the structure of it is not dissimilar to this Gracie like, yes. now I'm all fine. I'm all better now. It took three weeks and I, I'm all set. And it's like, well, of course you're not, because obviously if you're going to make this real reset or a real change, it's going to be slow. It's going to be difficult. It's going to take time. Um, and we've not seen Gabby do that. And it's interesting, the, though, that the fans are tougher on Gabby than they are on Gracie. They, they go behind. Gracie has worked that narrative better, even though she was with the coach that seemed to be a problem. Uh, it, at least she's showed more consistency than, I mean, Gabby, it's been, it's a, it's been a lot. It's been a lot yeah. to take in. And it's been often. It's been so much more often. Well, just because it seems like how much you can accomplish in a two week break, right? If you need to reset, it's clear that she is physically a tremendously talented athlete and skater. Uh, incredibly, incredibly. The spring she can get in the speed. The mistakes that she was making, I mean, she was off her axis. She just the didn't. The timing, the rhythm seemed yeah. off. And so do you find like if your rhythm was that off that it's you're just so not focused in the moment or yeah i think you're, you're either training sporadically sp training sporadic with the fight and flight perhaps you know who knows i mean she may not feel that she really has the numbers and the practice behind her to be mentally where you need to be for nationals i mean there's once because you have to realize if you're a skater every year nationals is when you feel peak like there's a certain sense of your body and the and work she has been in. that peak at nationals before yeah so she would very much know the difference yeah and you may be panicking kind of and that's kind of yeah i mean but she still could have made something possible even with what was a pretty i mean it wasn't a strong lackluster field. short she was still third like i felt like they if were she helping had her. just even done some bare minimum stuff she would have still been on that podium and the triple salco that she did do was very nice. She can do it all. Yeah. Was she landed that and a double loop. That was the only thing she landed. Cleanly. I know. She can still it do good. it. But again, they have to... If she's going to continue competing, Lee Barkel has got to take charge of the situation and make some real decisions and maybe do some or, more difficult Or things. force her out so she has to find a solution. Do you know what I mean? Maybe this is a Frank and... Um... It just seems chaotic, right? Like a whole oh thing... How come I never put it together? Like the show, it's Frank and Gracie. Oh! Oh my God! <laughs> um, but it is like a... <laughs> Not starring Lily Tomlin and Jane Fonda, but it's... And they're not making, when, like, sex toys for, like, advanced... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> but, like, when, when he was like, enough, I have to make this flip for myself. I, I, I wonder if and when Lee comes to that point for himself. I mean... Frank would have totally talked to Phil Hirsch and been like, absolutely, we're done. Did you just see the program? I mean, come on. Yeah. This is not working. What are we doing? Yeah. Well, this is the same situation where some, it's clearly not working. Uh, clearly there's a loss of control from all aspects. It's a circus at this point. And... But if you're the Federation, it's a very tricky situation you're in because there's really, maybe kind of as we've seen... There's only this... so many Beverly Smith articles that you could write putting a positive spin on this. That's just... Yeah, well, but there's if you take her out of the equation fully, I don't know who you're even going to put in a team event. So I have to say, I thought that... Um... Alison Schumacher well, had... Yes, she was my favorite of the ladies. I think she has the best technique, the best skating skills, overall, good packaging, nice music. Was she the one that Joey Russell did the program? I was really like, this next generation of Canadian gays, some good choreographers emerging. Uh, mm. Tyler... She just needed like uh, a B12 shot. Like, I just wanted I her to know. like... No, she needs more face and more yeah. like Marjorie. Tessa Virtue, can you run a clinic, like a small thing with Help your these country. Girls? Help your country. Okay. Get yeah. Michelle Long doing, like, can we just have her do the opening five moves of, like, Carmen and Moulin Rouge, like, again and again and again, and then teach them um, the umbrellas of Cherbourg, how to, like, we could have a workshop where we can just, you know, go Go over through the war partner. horses. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> we just need to go, whoa. All right, je t'aime, je t'aime, je t'aime, all of it. Okay, we're just gonna have the, a workshop for this, these girls, okay? Okay. For the boring yeah, girls because, of again, Canada. 
But her, because her style was the cleanest, it was the most classic. I enjoyed her. Oh, it was a palette you know, Yeah, was... but it, it, yeah, it just is missing sort of that energy. Um, but for sure, was a delightful skate. Maybe more so for me than Emily. I mean, Emily was nice. She's just totally. Wasn't, like this is clearly not her time yet, right? Like she's she was the best of a weaker field, but I. I don't know. I really liked Allison. I have to say, I would. I, I do too. Yeah. I would have cheated for her so hard if I were on that judging panel. I would yeah, have... I think it. I think it boiled down to to just the content itself, like because it still was a pretty watered down program. I would have gone for yeah. the GOE like crazy. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, the, oh, so they're going to all have to go and try to make world minimums, right? At I Fort Collins, the I whole hope game. Michelle gets to go. I'm. I'm in yeah. I'm on her team. I mean, sorry, not okay. Michelle. I'm on Allison's Alice. team. I keep yeah, wanting to call yeah. her Michelle Long. No, Michelle Long is the other skater from Spinning Out. I hope that Allison uh, makes it. I'm on her team. I like it. I like the whole... Yeah. I was rooting for her in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some of the other uh, skaters... I don't want to be mean. <laughs> it wasn't... Yeah. They weren't maybe up to the level. And yeah. put your bunga pads in the skates. Just... just just saying. Just, and, but now there was a lot of buzz around the junior girl. I think she's not. I'm worried. How do you think she's going to grow? Like, well, what? I was going to say this looked very prepubescent to me in like even more than a usual teary way even. Like I thought like what, we, what we're seeing now is the jumps were possible, but I already was like they don't seem the type of secure jumps that you know will last through It a was chain. funny to me how we always make – talk about how Canada will get on to like one person like Stephen Gogolev when they're young and just like glom on I have never seen Canada glom on to someone the way that they all got onto Kaya and they were like defending and every oh my goodness um, this was the most Canadian thing ever I mean lovely person I think age appropriate music uh, the packaging mm -hmm. a little rough when she's cradling <laughs> an infant child in this short program but uh, I blame Scott Davis isn't he her coach <laughs> Davis, yes. um, okay. but I mean a lovely yeah. skater uh, lovely but I don't know is it going to be too limmy is it not um, I was intrigued by the young boy from um, that sounded wrong the junior the junior man I guess we would call him Wesley from uh, Vancouver. He had a really nice short program and won the short program, and um, but then kind of stumbled in the second half of his long. But it'll be interesting to see where he goes to. Yeah. It was nice watching some of those clips that, and again, Ted commentating for the um, junior. But again, I have to say, bravo Canada, because they had all of those clips available, churning them out, you know, as we're dealing with NBC Gold Nightmare trying to figure out replays this week, you know. Did you see that Ted was even talking up Russia and Canadian nationals? Oh, they don't make any money putting that feed out, but they're, and like, Ted, it's propaganda, okay? They are. Yeah. Drop it. <laughs> You're in Canada. They just want to share the love of figure skating with the rest of the world. You're like, they are, this is like... This is all about them, you know, as This is about, like, be. the Red Army. This is, like, when they used to have their gymnastics team do displays around the world to show how much better they were than everyone else. This it's is, called dominance, yeah, not, they like, are. a ball they for the sport. The, they were sharing their love with gymnastics with uh, fellow lovers around the world, okay? This was... Do you know what I was thinking about, like, as Nam, in his own way, on a lesser level, was reminding me of Vincent. Yes, they were um, fortunate and, in some And I was ways. like... What if either one of them went to that Atari school? Like someone like Vincent could probably thrive there. Well, doesn't she just not like boys anyway? She said that they're weak. Jeff. No, but someone like Vincent would go with her. He would He would meet her, I think. Would he? I don't know. I mean... I do. I, I don't know. It was just this thing that came... Well, he's got Mia Hamada. I mean, she has a, a lawsuit that's going on with Nobunari Oda right now. I mean, she seems scary too. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So he can handle a tough woman. So, no, But now we're going to Graz... And we are going to the U.S. Nationals. There's a lot happening in the coming weeks. What's happening in Rods? The European Championships. Is this weekend at the same time as Nationals? I think so, John. Oh, Dave, I'm going to be... <laughs> it's going to be... Incredible. Just completely wiped by the end of this week. It's going to be an emotional journey. I European know. is going to be intense. Yes, January 20th to the 26th, the 2020 European Figure Skating Championships. Okay, we have... It's a lot of battles going on. We have the Atari Where are they being held this year? They're being Does held in Graz, in Austria. 
Oh, just like you said. Oh my God. It's okay. We're doing great. Zero good. Zero good. <laughs> but now that I'm getting my energy back, I think we're going to have some Russian videos to make soon. So I've had a couple of things and like I've had, I've wanted to make videos. I was feeling a little under the weather, but there just wasn't, I have a lot of like parts to the videos, but there's not like a, a hook article that I really mm. wanted to dig into. I thought maybe the Raphael one, but I don't know. And you're going to get plenty from Europeans. Like you're going to get so much material out of that. Don't worry. Yeah. It's not going away forever. I was sick and a little, a little bit. You got to pace yourself. <laughs> got lots to happen. Lots more to come. So more judging videos to come. So it'll be a lot of fun. But Jonathan, what was your moment of the week? Um, gosh, I'm going to say Roman Sadowski. Okay. I, I think he's just such a lovely skater. So it was really nice to see this go his way because I'm excited and I hope it propels him forward so that what comes next season is even more exciting and beautiful. All right. Well, I have a couple of moments. Okay. Such as the hair moment. <laughs> the hair moment. Okay. Rod Black in the short program talking about how freaking old Deanna is, like 17. Like excessive, and like even back from commercial break. Like it was insane. I, I, I couldn't, in both programs, in both short and free. Legendary, oh, legendary, <laughs> loved it. Okay, Rod, you are my favorite of the year. You always <laughs> warm my heart. Like you don't even know. But I really think that Joseph Van Freeskate, like I was happy. It was lovely. It's really lovely. You know I'm very into this junior boy that's going to win it. <laughs> that we are just praying. David Shapiro. Right. Yes, a beautiful skater. I, I'm into Joseph Fan in a similar way. I'm like, oh, oh, that was... Yeah, and it has an old school quality to it in a beautiful way. Yeah. I, just, I just hear David Wilson going, Mr. Coulson, you know, oh, I loved the whole thing. <laughs> I lo it was so good. I just want to text David Wilson and be like, I, I love you so much more. Yes, Thank, you. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah. For all what was you your do. favorite moment of the Canadian figure skating championships? We know you'll all say Kaya, but anyway, hold an edge. <laughs> it looks sexy. Bye, guys.